Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 35 to 36 of section 3 of the pink booklet. So this is a, um, it's got quite a complicated diagram which I've simplified at the bottom of the screen now. Um, that describes oxidation of glucose and ethanol. Um, and I've brought it up to the point where th th what they have in common, which is acetate, um, beyond that point is not really helpful. Um, question 35 says, which of glucose, oxaloacetate and NADH, if labelled with carbon-13, would result in the production of 13 carbon labelled um, ATP? So I have I just want to talk about what ATP is, um, first of all. So it's sort of the energy um, currency of the of the cell. Um, it's adenosine triphosphate. And the way it's produced is adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, um, is added to an inorganic phosphate and you get ATP. And the energy that's sort of contained within ATP is contained in the bond between these two things and that phosphate bond. So we've got um, adenosine here and then we've got three phosphates and the energy is held in this bond right here. Um, so the purpose of this whole co quite complicated biochemical um, process is to create the energy that's stored in this bond. Um, and so what's, what happens is that uh, a phosphate group is added to an existing ADP molecule. Um, so ADP isn't made out of glucose, oxaloacetate or NADH. Uh, it's something that already exists within the cell. So if you labelled glucose, oxaloacetate or NADH, none of the carbon atoms involved in those particular molecules would actually end up in the ADP that's already there. And so you couldn't get carbon-13 labelled ATP by labelling any of those. So that means that the answer for question 35 is D. If we look at question 36, then this one's a little bit complicated and it says how many moles of ethanol are needed to produce as much ATP as would be produced by one mole of glucose. So I'm going to take away some of the detail. I'm just going to pretend that this little bit of it doesn't exist for now and we'll come back to why in a second. But we've got a ratio of one ethanol molecule to half a glucose molecule and they go on to produce one molecule of uh, one acetate molecule. So that's the common point they have in their biochemical reaction. And beyond that point, you get four ATP that is produced. And so if it was as simple as this, then you could say that you need twice as much ethanol to produce the same amount of acetate and therefore the same amount of ATP. So you say that you need two times as much. But if you look at this diagram in a little more detail, you can see that in the conversion of glucose to pyruvate, um, you have some ATP produced. In fact, you have two ATP molecules that are produced in this process, which means that you need slightly more than two um, ethanol molecules to um, catch up with this. In fact, you need 2.5 uh, ethanol molecules um, to produce the same amount of ATP as one glucose molecule. And so out of the answers that we've got here, it's less than one, more than one, but less than two, more than two, but less than four, or more than four. Well, we know we need just over two um, molecules of ethanol to produce the same amount of ATP as we produce by one mole of glucose. So the answer for number 36 is gonna be more than two, but less than four, which is C. So that was questions 35 and 36. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.